NMPC is not working because of corruption. Refines are not working because of corruption. Look at Brazil. Petrobras is working. 2.3 million barrels of crude oil production every day. $174 billion sized. $121 million billion revenue annually. $37 billion profit annually. Crude oil reserve of Brazil, 15.5 billion barrels. Nigeria has 7.7 .7 billion dollars. Do you know why Nigeria is not working? Petrobras is owned only 28.5% by the Brazilian government. The rest are owned by insurance investors, just like we have in Nigeria liquefied natural gas. The only corporation that is working today. NLNG is working because federal government owns 49% and 51% is owned by private sector investors. If we want the refineries to work in the next six months, divest 60% of the federal government holding from NMPC. Bring in deep-pocketed, capable, technically savvy, private sector investors to take over that 60%. First of all, that would release 40 billion into the operation account. This analyst has come out to give Tinubu bass boost over the corruption that is happening in NMPC. Tell me, does it mean Tinubu is not aware or is he just nursing the corruption we saw that all started under the leadership of Buhari and today he's nursing them and consolidating on all the mess that Buhari left behind. So guys, you need to take your time and listen to what this analyst has got to say just for you to know that Nigeria is in a, in a serious mess. Just take a look at this video. The problems are fundamental. Just let us address this issue. Annually, we import $24 billion worth of refinery, pro uh, white petroleum product and minerals that we can easily produce here. Just we have refineries in, in Port Harcourt, in Wari, with, and, uh, and Kaduna with combined refining capacity of 445,000 barrels a day. Those refineries have not been working. They are not older than most refineries are working across the whole world. Charles, if we want to make this country work, we need to be very honest and situate things properly. Nobody goes to build a refinery without first of all thinking about the fish stock even before putting the first foundation on the floor. I give you an example. Naira Delta Refinery is one refinery in Nigeria, Mola Refinery. Before Naira Delta Refinery put in one block, they already had a marginal fuel that we were operating under the Arade Group. No investor put a money on ground to do refinery without first of all, all considering his crude oil fish stock, even signing agreement over 20 years period. I was privileged to be part of the team by side that bought Nafcon on air. The first thing that the buyers considered was how they would get the fish stock, and they had to sign 20 year contract with NGC, and that is number one. For the referees to work, there must be institutional reform. Charles, let's face fact. NMPC is not working because of corruption. Refineries are not working because of corruption. Look at Brazil. Petrobras is working. 2.3 million barrels of crude oil production every day. $174 billion sized. $121 million, billion revenue annually. $37 billion profit annually. Crude oil reserve of Brazil, 15.5 billion barrels. Nigeria has 7.7 .7 billion dollars. Do you know why Nigeria is not working? Petrobras is owned only 28.5% by the Brazilian government. The rest are owned by insurance investors, just like we have in Nigeria liquefied natural gas. The only corporation that is working today. NLNG is working because federal government owns 49% and 51% is owned by private sector investors. If we want the refineries to work in the next six months, divest 60% of the federal government holding from NMPC. Bring in deep-pocketed, capable, technically savvy, private sector investors to take over that 60%. First of all, that would release 40 billion into the operation account. Do IPO of $20 billion, extra money will come in. When you do this, Charles, it will become efficiently run like NLNG, like the Petrobras. In the next one year, Charles will be shocked. This country will start doing 2.5 million barrels a day. Those refineries will start working. The truth is, the refineries are not working because of the corruption in the oil and gas sector. It's a sleazy environment. And we know this. Brazilians are no more righteous than Nigerians. But the Brazilian government clearly saw what we are experiencing today. And that they divested. Why is the federal government of Nigeria holding 100% shareholding in something that is not working? And interestingly, over the last nine years, the same set of human beings that have been at the helm of affairs are still there. When you have for nine years people who have been at the helm of affairs of an industry that is not working, what do you do, Charles? You rationalize. You do away with those who are not performing and bring in fresh blood, 
fresh hands. Even if it means hiring expatriates, Aramco is working. Angola is working. Petrobras is working. Why is Nigeria not working? Why very, are we... They told us that, in 2021. 1.5 billion dollars to right. be... That, that's a very sound question, and you're making a heck of a lot of sense, I have to say, with the points that you're making. But we have to move on, and we've got to um, give Abba Kaka a chance to come in. And the other issue, Australist and Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, warning about the dangers of the continued hike in interest rates in Nigeria. Those rates are now, of course, at a staggering 30%. And Mr. Dangote sounded the alarm that it is stifling the country's economy and making it almost impossible for local industries to survive and thrive. But at the same event, Nigeria's Vice President, Kashim Shetima, said that the government will prioritize made in Nigeria goods and is joining forces with the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria to develop a roadmap and a policy framework that would, as he put it, refocus the country's manufacturing sector. But with so many factories and manufacturers either going bust or on the verge of going bust, and with interest rates shooting through the roof, how on earth is the government planning to refocus the manufacturing sector. Import dependence is equivalent to importing poverty, exporting jobs. Anything that you import, you are importing poverty into your nation and you are exporting jobs out. No power, no growth, no prosperity. So unless you have a power, you will not have growth, you will not have prosperity. Today we are battling with a very high interest rate. This interest rate is now saying that we should fight uh, inflation. The interest rate is 30 percent. There won't be any job creation because we are actually stifling growth. So interest rate can remain 30, but then no growth will happen unless that interest rate goes down. I feel the pain of the hard times our manufacturers are facing, particularly regarding the rising operational costs due to the inevitable fallout of the ongoing reforms. The reforms are aimed at making our economy stronger and better, and most importantly, in the interest of our future generations. Through collective efforts by the government and the private sector, we will transcend bonds and limits that have caused an up a cause to smile later. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we must at all costs shift our economy from being import dependent. Both the private and public sectors have relied too much on imported goods, goods we can actually produce at home, undermining our own industrial potential. Nigeria's Vice President uh, Kashim Shetima there, and before him, uh, the country's top industrialist, uh, Aliko Dangote. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now from our studios in Lagos by the development economist and investment banking executive, Dr. Nemeka Obiareri, and here in Abuja by the development expert and public policy analyst, Abba Kaka. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let me come to you first, uh, Dr. Obiareri, what is your reaction to Aliko Dangote, Nigeria's top industrialist, warning that the continued hike in interest rates to the point where it's literally going through the roof is stifling Nigeria's economy at a time when you need strong local industries to attract foreign direct investment? There is nothing Aliko Dangote said that some of us have not said over the last one year. High interest rate driven by high monetary policy rates is antithetical to development, to manufacturing and productivity. Now, but we need to situate this properly. Why do we have high NPR rates? We need to understand why we are where we are, then credibly profile solutions that will help this country to get out of the world. The Central Bank of Nigeria, remember, they are the monetary policy managers. The Central Bank of Nigeria deploys countries of actions and policies and programs to control the volume of money in circulation. Those who run the physical side 
the president, the governors, national assembly members, and state assembly members are the physical managers. Their job is to uh, deploy the powers of taxation and public spending to provide stability and the st economic production. What has happened over the last one year, in fact, over the last nine years, is that we have deployed monetary policy instruments to tackle even physical policy problems that are not supposed to be so. 95% of the problems of Nigeria are from the physical side. Why is Central Bank of Nigeria using high MPR rates? That is the only way they can attract foreign private investors because the foreign direct investors are not coming. And those who are already invested here are exiting this economy because of the suffocating economic climate and the floppy um, policy summer source that we have here. The only way central bank, the only instrument available for them now is to increase NPR to see if the FPIs, who are like the sharks who bay for blood, they migrate where they can generate and maximize their returns. The only way we can tackle this, we have inflation. And the inflations are driven by two factors. One is foreign exchange related, and one is food related. And the food insecurity in Nigeria is driven by insecurity across the six regions of Nigeria. Nigeria has capacity to produce 99% of what we consume here and export nothing less than $375 billion worth of non-oil goods and services. But we are not doing so because of insecurity. And we need to tackle insecurity holistically. Our foreign exchange earner, major earner, is the crude oil. 85% of our forex. Why did we not have this kind of volatility under Olusegun Obasanjo? One, Olusegun Obasanjo, when he became president, inherited 1.8 million barrels a day oil production. Price of crude oil was $17.34. But Olusegun Obasanjo ensured two things. Crude oils were not stolen. Leakages were st stifled. Our PMS consumption under Obasanjo, even when we had a middle class that was buoyant, higher purchasing power for Nigerians, was 2.228 million liters per day. Obasanjo ensured two things. Crude oil was not stolen. Downstream was not overinflated. But under the current government, over the last nine years, we lose $1.9 billion worth of our crude oil resources to different and inefficiencies. On the downstream sector, we lose most of our oil resources through over-invoicing and inflating of consumption figures of the PMS in Nigeria. We spent $24 billion importing what we can refine here. So basically, the only way we can rein in and reduce the cost of lending, the only way we can support Cardoso to reduce NPR rate is for us to stop the oil tea free at the upstream, okay. reduce the inefficiencies and criminality at the downstream. When we do this, we will have enough cushion and leeway to do this. But as long as we have refused to tackle insecurity, right. tackle could or eat free and inefficiencies, we are wasting our time. Uh, Mr. Kaka, um, that was raised at that summit, um, which on the face of it sounds good, is the issue of patronizing Nigerian-made goods. And peripherally, Dr. Biareri was also touching on that, uh, because if you make Nigerian industries work, then you're kind of indigenizing a lot of things. But that brings us back to the issue of leadership by example, doesn't it? Which you, Mr. Kaka, have you know, talked about quite a lot uh, several times that we, we've had you here. Because we don't see the Nigerian leadership patronizing Nigerian made goods, do we? I mean, I've made this point myself repeatedly, but we don't see them driving made in Nigeria innocent cars <laughs> and making the purchase of Nigerian manufactured goods the absolute prerequisite for any assistance or cooperation with countries in Africa, for instance, that Nigeria has influence over and often assists financially. Absolutely. Uh, last time I was here, if you remember, I talked about made in Nigeria goods. I actually Absolutely. mentioned, I I mentioned innocent. Uh, now, I'm glad that the president has directed the MDS, and I hope all the ministries, and I also hope the 36 state governors will take a cue from that, because we have to not only go back to the farms, as I said also, but we have to patronize made in Nigeria goods because the excesses of government in terms of foreign exchange, which 
you know, the pressure on the Naira itself. Look at what the, 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 the purchases of these uh, Japanese cars by the National Assembly. A patriotic National Assembly wouldn't have done that. Mm. So I'm glad that the government is making sound policies. As the Vice President has said also, that we have to go back you know, we, the attitude change has to start. Right. We have to buy made in Nigeria. We have to produce and what we eat and we have to produce to export. Otherwise, the pressure on the Naira will continue. But as, just to answer doctor's uh, issue, where he was saying that the you know, government needs to divest. Of course, once you divest, you get like the uh, Dangote refinery, which is like 80% owned by him and 20% owned by others. So why is this not working also? Because of the same corruption. We know, even if all the three ref refineries in Nigeria are working, the combined capacity is less than what Dangote alone can right. produce. This is what we need. The government needs to gear towards that and give him the crude. He's, they're not giving the crude for free. Right. Okay. He's buying the crude. Why should he import from the United States right. just to refine? Okay, well, we're almost out of time, and I'm going to come to you for a final um, word, uh, Dr. Obiareri. I mean, uh, and just briefly, we heard earlier the governors of the Southeast region, they were talking about Namdi Kano, but they were also talking, and talking quite emphatically, about um, the fact that they're working on economic integration of the region. How important is that if Nigeria is to move forward rapidly along the development route? Um, Charles, um, the southeast of Nigeria occupies a very strategic position in Nigeria. I say it to anybody who cares to listen. The southeast of Nigeria has the smallest land mass, 2.8 million hectares of land. Of course, bigger hectare, um, arable land mass like Netherlands. The southeast of Nigeria can actually, on its own, without recourse to the federal government of Nigeria, produce nothing less than 40 to $60 billion worth of goods and services annually. Um, the question is, is a good step that they've taken to ensure that Mazen Namdekano is released? And the fact is, the insecurity we have in the southeast of Nigeria is because of leadership vacuum. I say it to anybody who cares to listen. There is no father who is doing well that his sons will say, okay, I am disowning my father. I don't want to be part of my father's household. The only child that will say, I don't want to be part of my father's household is a child that has a responsible father who is not taking care of the child. So the agitation in the Southeast and the concomitant in insecurity is because of paucity of quality leadership. Dr. Michael Lockbara between 1959 to 1966 built 214 kilometer industrial belt without any good oil revenue. If the current leadership in the South is since 1990 now have lived up to the visions of Michael Lobola and Desa Mumbakwe, there will not have been insecurity, there, not, there will not have been anything like insecurity in the Southeast. Why we have pockets of ungoverned areas in the Southeast is because of absence of quality leadership. Right. And this is advice to the governors of the Southeast. Each and every one of them must think Samun Bakwe must think Michael Lobara. If any of them can muster courage to govern like Samuel Lumbakwe, like Michael Lobara, insecurity will die in the Southeast. Okay, on that note, I want to thank you very much indeed. Always good to hear from you, uh, Dr. Nemeka Obiareri. Very powerful points you make there. And of course, he is a development economist and in. So, guys, what, so guys, what comes to your mind when you see a headline like this? that NMPC and refineries are not working because of corruption. So this analyst has come out to say that there are these cabals, you know, who do not want Nigeria to have a refinery. And they are trying their best to sabotage, even if you are an individual and you want to set up a refinery in Nigeria. It's not going to work because there is this gang, you know, who are touts in this oil and gas industry just to disrupt the system and one keeps wondering when are we going to get this country in the right direction so guys nigeria is not just facing the challenge of oil theft you know we all know how much we lose daily sometimes peter Obi comes out to call figures that when you hear it you will, you will stagger and not just that you know that we have as challenge we also have these criminal elements you know in the 
oil and gas industry who try to frustrate any effort to like make nigeria get maximum benefit from you know being an oil producing country so guys mr peter Obi said one of the achievements that tinubu has achieved you know in his first year in office is to continue from where buari stopped so we can see it playing out in area of corruption tinubu is not taking any st stop tinubu is not taking any strong stance in fighting corruption in nigeria one keeps wondering does it mean he does not understand the impact of corruption in bringing nigeria down so guys the nnpc has been in the news lately because people believe that there is this cabal group you know that are manipulating the nnpc and making nigerians not to gain any benefit from the nnpc and guess why and one keeps wondering why is Tinubu not interested in you know dismantling the leadership of the nnpc why has the chairman of the nnpc continued to be the chairman just like INEC, despite all the mess that INEC did during the last election if we were to have a same government today i think they will be considering sacking INEC for suddenly coming up to tell nigerians that there was a glitch and today the INEC chairman is still the one coordinating elections, you know, in, at state, at different state levels. Tell me why there won't be a repetition of those glitches that they told us that occurred during the presidential election. Don't expect Nigerian elections to be fair and free. Anyway, that's not even the topic. So, guys, you can see why even some people think they shouldn't even be part of this country this is why people are clamoring this is why you know nigerians are brazing up for protest because these politicians all they know is just themselves look at the massive corruption you can imagine that it is corruption that is keeping nigeria from progressing and still nobody wants to dismantle the gang that is responsible for this corruption and one keeps wondering why is it that once somebody is elected into this office, they all pay blind eyes to the rot that is seen in the system? Because, you know, it will not turn back to hurt them. So, guys, you have seen it for yourself. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you.